Hey, hi there, Sagittarius. Welcome to my channel, and thank you for tuning in to the energies and influences coming through for your weekly reading, February 10th to the 16th. Doing something a little different this time, I'm going to be adding an oracle card for you. It's called The Sacred Traveler, and it's by Denise Lynn. You guys, I'm starting with you because you are my number one viewers for the month. Remember, this is a condensed general reading, so please only take those portions that resonate with you. I invite you to subscribe, like, and comment, and share. It really helps me out a lot, and it helps to bring your vibration into the future readings. I also send my intentions out for my community and my viewers. Please remember to check out my description box below. Thanks, you guys. And after the reading is a take note moment. Okay, Sagittarius, off camera, I've done a protective blessing. I've shuffled and meditated over these cards just for you. Your first card, it's the general atmosphere, the background, and the basis of the matter. This is the foundation. It's something that's already passing. Number three of the Major Arcana in the Rider Waite deck, the Empress. This can be a Taurus or a Libra. This represents material abundance, fertility and fruitfulness. There's nurturing here and natural growth. This can also represent a mother. There's fertility for would-be parents. There's material wealth and sometimes marriage. This is love through compassion and nurturing, opening to beauty, pleasure, and abundance. There's passion and sensual involvement with the world. This is a time of passion of sexual desire and enjoyment of life. This can also stand for a person's mother or you may be showing a motherly concern for another. You may be in a position of nurturing someone else or several others. You could be caring for children or the sick or being supportive of a spouse or a friend in need. It is appropriate for you to nurture now because you have the inner strength and the ability to do so without depleting yourself. This could also refer to a pregnancy or the desire for pregnancy. This also shows that your health is going to be improving. Your second card, and this is the energies crossing over your path, can be a challenge. Number seven of swords, air energy. This represents evasion and strategy and deception. There may be a need for you to avoid a confrontation in order to reach the right decision about someone or something. This is having the courage of your dreams and the strength to face unsolved puzzles of your life. But your, this necessity for prudence and evasion, it's because you're trying to gain an, an objective. This is a time for brain and not brawn. Its direct or aggressive tactics will not be useful in this situation. But diplomacy and charm will work. Someone could be trying to escape from something that they did that's dishonorable. You or someone else. These are mental tests. It has to do with deception and gathering information. Someone might have broke an agreement. This is someone that's doing what serves their own ends. And even if it means they are deceptive or manipulative. Someone may have stolen, stolen from you, or maybe you have stolen from someone. This is sneaking around 
behind someone else's back. Someone not being up front with you. Or it could be as simple as plain hooky to steal some time for yourself. But you're plagued by guilt. But there is still time. There's still time to correct this situation. Your third card. And this is how it affects you. This is your attitude. Number 16 of the Major Arcana in the Rider Waite deck. The Tower. You Sagittarius, you might have a little blow up. But this is a, a change. It's a conflict. This is some kind of disruption that's going to bring enlightenment. This is some sort of upheaval in your life. It could be destructive and sometimes violent. This upheaval releases pent-up emotions and brings liberation. You're able to find a spiritual opportunity within this drama. Could be a surprise, but this is action and release and shaking things up. It's also a shocking revelation. This is a swift and dramatic change. You may be questioning beliefs. These are unseen forces at work here. You may be emotionally shaken. This is maybe even physically stricken. Could be a fall. You might be shocked out of complacency. This is being suddenly expo exposed or enlightened. Could be falling. Someone's failing at something. Feel like losing a secure position. Maybe experiencing an injury or a betrayal. This is detoxifying and driving out obstacles so you can gain greater awareness. This is someone angrily confronting. You're learning the hard way. These, this release of pent-up emotions will make you feel liberated. So let it crumble and let the light in. Here comes the light, Sagittarius. Your fourth card the result, the outcome, and the advice. Number nine of the Major Arcana in the Rider Waite deck, the Hermit. This could be a Virgo. Someone's going to offer some wisdom, or you are going to offer wisdom, going inside yourself. This is guidance, introspection, it's inner guidance. There's silent counsel and discretion. You're going to receive wisdom from above or some instructions from an expert in your field. This is slowing down and distancing yourself from others. You could be distancing yourself physically or psychologically. Could be mentoring or even guiding others. Researching, investigating, seeking answers, soul searching, turning away from people toward self examination. You need to clear your mind of the external hurly burly to allow time and space for your mind to empty and your thoughts to clear. This is self examination in order to search for a new definition of truth. It's like a vision quest. Your fifth card. This is the bottom of the deck card. The underlying issue. This is what's unseen. The king of pentacles, Sagittarius. Earth energy person. Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Second card that represents Virgo. This could be 
a wealthy, mature man, or they're well off, to syndicate security. This is uh, someone who may invest in you sometime in the future. They're a dependable, solid citizen. This indicates kindness to others. They're materially oriented with a lot of ambition. Could be a father or a boss surrounding you. Someone who loves money and riches, and they're happy to collect as much as possible. They're very clever. It's like they're a financial wizard, and they're not corrupt. They earn their money through hard and patient effort. He's generous with what he has, and he shares gladly. There may be a lesson here to be content with what you have and express your needs and undertake what is necessary for their fulfillment. Okay, your oracle card here is The Wandering Path. Enjoy the journey. I just got these cards as a gift from one of my subscribers, a very beautiful soul. I've been waiting, actually looking, for an oracle card deck for quite a while, over a year. And this came as a gift, and it was perfect. So I know I have to use them. I have to go to the book because I haven't got them all memorized yet. I did just get these. The Wandering Path. You don't always need to know where you're going, except the fact that sometimes the path in life is meandering. Yet know that you are always exactly where you need to be, even if it doesn't seem like it. Be present with your journey. Embrace everything that you encounter on the path. It is all for your highest good, except what is. This is the key to inner power, the sacred traveler wants you to know that when you are traveling, you are in the present moment. A mystic traveler has no specific goals for the future and is not focused upon the destination. Everything is fresh and new. At times it is difficult to accept everything that occurs on the road of life, especially if the road seems to twist and turn in unexpected ways like the tower there. It is an act of courage and faith to accept what is, without judgment or dismay, and keep going. Trust that there is a plan for your life, and it is unfolding perfectly. Have faith that you are on the road that you are meant to be on and travel on, accepting what is. Doesn't mean you can't work to change things, because you can. However, this card does suggest that every experience is supporting you for your highest good and your spiritual evolution. If there is something you can't accept, start by gently accepting the fact that you can accept it. Allowing for your own wandering path is the key to grace and peace in your life. Thanks, you guys. Take note, for this is key. To allow the universe to move you to happier and better things, look around you and appreciate the good things you have right now. Count your blessings in the here and now. When we dwell on dissatisfaction, it roots us to the position where we currently are. When we are full of appreciation for what we have, we attract happier and better times. Remember, we are magnets. Appreciation attracts appreciation. All we have to do is ask and believe and that gets us on the receiving frequency of goodness. Thanks, you guys. Now remember, what goes around comes around. So I'm sending you out love and light. Thanks for watching.